What is up, all my beautiful legends? I hope you guys are having a great weekend and happy Saturday. This is it, the culmination of Geiger. This is Chapter 6, Issue 6, the final, final part of this book. And it all leads up to the new Ghost Machine Day, April 3rd, when Geiger is coming back along with Redcoat and Rook. So we're going to start off like we always do with the cover image over there on the left. And then it says, America has always been at war. And in every war, there are men and women rising up and fight for their freedom and their family. They call them the unnamed. And then it says, uh, the American Revolution, December 26, 1776, the immortal. The American Civil War, October 28, 1862, the historian. World War II, June 1944, The Monster, and then The Vietnam War, August 1st, 1972, The Robot. Basically just introducing us to all these characters in the universe, and you are going to see and find out a lot about The Robot coming up. And then he starts to say, The Widow, and she's like, will you finish the story already? What happened to Geiger and those kids? Did they get out of that freaking bunker or what? And he's like, I'm getting to that. Let me finish my grand intro. Sorry about that. I had a bad sneeze attack with my allergies and I had to cut this together. So he goes, will you let me get back to my grand intro? And he says, the unseen war, January 20th, 2025, the ghost. And back to the end, which is our beginning, the unknown war, July 4th, 2030, the glowing man. So you have this whole intro of all these characters from all the wars and the unnamed wars and this entire Ghost Machine universe. So like I said, buckle up because you're going to learn a lot about the robot here coming up. To remind you, the year was 2050, the 13th of June to be exact, nearly 20 years to the day after the bomb forever changed to wreak Geiger into the radioactive creature he became. The King of Vegas had discovered a map leading him to his grail, the football, in NORAD, and he's like, ha ha ha. He envisioned his sword slicing the glowing man open, watching his flickering eyes spilling out. He's like, the king. And then it shows him vrooming in, he's like, this is delicious. Thank you. I've never had so much ice cream before. Do you have strawberry? My mom said strawberry was her favorite when I was a kid. And he's like, hello? hello in there looking into the two-way glass all of a sudden somebody comes flying through the door and Tariq's like Henry are you okay he's like I'm fine I'm eating a sundae she's like I'm so sorry why'd Tariq do that what's going on Haley and he's like about what he she's like you've always you're been tired and I'm always telling you to stop complaining but I thought you were just a kid you're sick Henry you're sick and these people won't let us stay here He's like, I don't want to be sick. And Tariq's like, I was sick too. So basically now the kid's freaking out because they just bust in there. And he's just chilling, thinking everything's nice. And now she knows he has leukemia. So basically Geiger's just, you know, being remorseful for him, relating with him, and saying I was sick too because, you know, he got hit by a bomb and he had cancer. And that's what saved him. So here we see Tariq really being compassionate and feeling for him. And like I said, he had cancer as well. And he says, I was sick and I was scared, but I had people that helped me. You have people that are going to help you too, okay? They said you have leukemia. It's, as you see, you know, army men coming down the hallway. She says, we have to go. Am I going to die like mom? I'm not going to let that happen to you or your sister. I'm here for you. And you got a nice white background. He's, he's embracing him holding him as Barney rushes out. They're like, what the hell? Get the hell off me as they get attacked by Barney. And then Geiger come, Tariq comes out. He's not Geiger yet, but he's still Tariq. But they said, they're in the North Wing. Where do we go now? Haley, I can show you. As the kid from before pops out, you know, he's going to help them because he's still around and he helped them. Says, this is the quickest way out. There might be some soldiers in the hangar. It depends if they're out on scout. I got your suits. I think we're going to be incinerated. Why are you helping us? I don't, I don't know. I just don't like all the rules here. And Tariq's like, let's go. Stay behind as he opens the door and gets smashed back. And they're like, Tariq. And there he is. Your first real appearance if you haven't read Junkyard Joe. There he is. My guy, Junkyard Joe. And they're like, Haley, he looks like Junkyard Joe. The comic strip, the cartoon, but scarier. And he's like, stay clear. 
this is going to get bright as Geiger and Junkyard Joe rush at each other in battle. And I know the next few clips and panels are going to go pretty quick because we're going to have a lot of action. So like I said, buckle up and try and stay with me on these next few slides. Boom, Geiger just smashes Junkyard Joe in the face with his rod. And then Junkyard Joe grabs one of his rods and breaks it. He's like, Tariq, I told you to stay clear as he jams the rod into the ground. And then he says, what the hell are you? As he grabs Junkyard Joe by the head and basically he just says his helmet's melting he's like shit as he's melting his you know exoskeleton off to reveal you know his armor inside and that's him melting him basically with geiger's power he's like look out as geiger gets thrown into an explosion tank and then gets blown up and goes flying out the other way. Like I said, these next panels are very intense. And remember, his dampening rods and the rods that he uses to fight with on his back, if he's without them for too long, he can go nuclear himself. And he's like, his dampening rod. He's like, what? This is warning. Hangar has been breached. The rot robot broke one. If Tariq doesn't get this one back, he'll explode. And he's like, you, you're absorbing everything I got, aren't you? As Junkyard Joe just smashes him in the face. And Junkyard Joe's giving Geiger the business. And they're like, it's stuck. Keep trying as they're trying to pull that rod out. And he's like, Haley, Rick, your eye in the air. I need you to get back inside. And he's out there helping them, the kid from before. And he doesn't have a suit on. So that's not, and they're like, that's not good. They're like, I feel it moving. He's like, what's the deal with you, Joe? Why won't you melt, damn it? You're nuclear powered too? That makes us brothers. No need to fight. And she's like, Tariq, your rod. He's like, kids, get back. As Junkyard Joe aims at the kid and shoots missiles from his hands and blows them back. As Tariq's like, no. And this is where I've mentioned where I liked reading this before Junkyard Joe, even though Junkyard Joe came out before. They said, I've never seen it active before. Joe's been reprogrammed to do what needs to be done, Mr. Vice President. Are the stories about his creator true? Every last one of them. As, like I said, Junkyard Joe's really giving Geiger the business. They're like, your rod, Tariq, don't lose it. And he goes to pick it up. And he's like, hey, stay away from my kids. As you have another just all-white background. As he comes flying over him and jabs the rod right into Junkyard Joe as Junkyard Joe goes down. And then you get a little flashback. He's like, Joe, that really you? And then, like I said, that is where you see his creator and person, basically his father that created him with the comic strip. That's where the more touching side when, like I said, I'm not trying to spoil anything. If you do go down Junkyard Joe and read that, I do recommend it. But uh, you'll definitely reference it and uh, remember it from this part. Now Geiger's sitting there. He's like, ah, oh, kids. He's like, ah, oh, you need to get away as he's exploding. Just, you know, convulsing this Geiger and this radiation energy out. And they're like, oh, no. He's like, damn it. Get far away. He's like, Rod, gotta. And he's like, shoves the rod inside of him. He's like, the rod as it shatters. And he's like, Haley. That one broke too. What do we do now? And he's like, I told you to stay back. And he's basically going nuclear at this point. And she's like, Tariq, listen to me. He's like, I can't control this. I never could. He's like, it's getting really hot. And he's like, please go. And she's like, no, you won't hurt us. We're like a family now. And they grab Tariq's hand and like a snap of the fingers, he's back to his normal form. Now you just have a whole one-page spread of them embracing each other. Great moment. And he's like, we're here for you. And then the kid comes out and he's like, <laughs> he's like, what happened? I told you that you could do it. Why are you so sad? He's like, I'm not Henry. As the dog jumps up and starts licking him. He's like, Haley, Christ, Rick, what are you doing out here? Rick? And they said his mother is going to kill us. This kind of exposure. Let's get him in before the general has our asses. He's like, what do we do now? We go and we don't look back. Now they're driving away and they're like, I'm tired again. It's okay. Try and rest. And he's <laughs> exhaling the radiation as he's trying to hold the Geiger form in you. He's like, Tariq, I won't hurt you. He's like, we know you won't. Damn it, what is this? As all the king's men are lined up on there. And he's like, the king. He's like, hold. Yes. Yes, it's him. 
the glowing man. He's like, yippee, does he have the football? He's like, wait here, where are you going? To go say hi. And he's like, he's walking towards us, just walking. Wait, oh, oh, it's a challenge. Yes, a challenge for the king's honor. And he's like, no times for games, kid. We need that backpack. It's just boring to you, you little brat. And then basically all the king's men are getting ready to fight for glory. So we're going to see an absolute epic battle unfold again. So like I said, buckle up them seatbelts one more time. They say for the Camelot. And then you see Tariq just walking. For me, destroy the glowing man. As he just explodes and just takes those two cards out. He's like, he glows, all right. Think my time with the king is over. Are you with us, Bonnie? And she's like, yep, let's skip out of here, boys. He's like, wait, come back, you cowards. After they see that, they bounce. They're like, no, not messing with this dude. And he's like, that was, was awesome. You should be buckle up. There's a place in town with doctors. One of them helped me a long time ago. They don't like me very much, but they can help Henry now. She's like, can you help you too? Yeah. Yeah, they can help me too, Henry. And he's like, Boulder City, one week, sunset. Call my nuclear knights. Which one, sir? All of them, you idiot. So now again, they're all gearing up and getting ready to go. So, cuts. Three days later, Copper Canyon, Mexico. He's still trying to control the Geiger. You can see his eyes glowing right there. And he shows up at one of the old places that we saw before where he was getting help. They say, you're not welcome back here, Tariq. She says, Nurse Red, we've been told to kill you on sight. You know that. I know these kids, though. One of them is sick. And she's like, kids? And he's like, I have to go. And they're like, what? What's going on? So basically, he brought the kids there, but he can't stay. They're like, I thought they were going to help you, too. I don't want to go with them. I know I said that, but I can't. You're safe now. You really are. I'm sorry, Henry, but this is goodbye. Are you going to be okay without you? I'm not going to be without you. She's like, you're different. And he's like, not really, as he speeds off with Barney barking at him. And it says, so Geiger went home. He read his favorite books. He did the dishes. He took down the wall. He buried his family. And he waited until sunset. And it's like, glowing man. As he's just sitting there, just chilling, waiting there. He's like, we are here as requested, fool. And he brought his whole gang with him. And he's like, your head is mine. And he's like, there's nothing here you can hurt. Not anymore. And he's like, "What? wait, what's he? And then Geiger opened his heart. And this next like splash page, it, it doesn't do it justice, what I'm showing you. But it's literally just a two-page spread of just a flash of green. And uh, like I said, you'll, you'll see it here when I, when I cut to the next slide. So let's just get, and he found peace. And that's it. It's just literally a two-page spread of just a green, just a green flash. And that is Geiger just lighting up. And I love that. It's one of the coolest scenes I've seen in a comic, especially just reading the story and then getting to that point. And then you flip to the next page and you have just another two page splash of the explosion going off. And then it just, yep, with the two headed wolf, Barney, just watching in the distance. So I love that. I, I, I've never really seen that in a comic, just, just do that to that level. But hats off to them for those two pages right there were absolutely phenomenal. Now we cut back to where they were telling the story of present time and they say, and all that happened right here in this spot. So the giant crater they've been sitting in this entire time has been from that explosion. Sure did. Like Paul Bunyan, Calamity Jam, John Henry, Tariq Geiger became a legend. A story about the lengths a man went to protect his family. The kids found help. The girl, she was someone special to me once, but that was the end of the king, the end of Boulder City and the end of Geiger. The end of Geiger himself? No. Geiger's story was only beginning. And then it cuts and it says, Boulder City is gone, and so is my horrible son, the horrible scab. So there's the mom that was trapped in the basement, blade style, back in the beginning. I beg you all for your forgiveness for his actions. They were unsanctioned by me, I assure you. And here we have Safari Bob. The king stirred the glowing man from his nest, my dear queen but perhaps that will benefit us all. I'm all ears, Bob. What do you say to that, General? 
Don't worry, you worry, Bob. I'm sure President Griffin is willing to make some kind of arrangement. How about we discuss it over some pre-war whiskey? And then this is one of the reasons why I like the trade. Um, it, I, I might be able to flash it. It just kind of depends on how it works in the slide. But at the end, you have all the cover images for every issue in the trade. And they're phenomenal, man. Like I said, Ghost Machine Day is April 3rd. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you got some interest in the character. And at the end of the day, it's a great jumping on point. You have Rook, you have Geiger, you have Redcoat coming out. Any of those are going to be great jumping on points for anybody. I'm most excited for Rook personally, but I can't wait to see what happens with Tariq and Geiger after his uh, kind of, uh, he had a kind of a two shot special that kind of caught us back up with what was going on. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just very excited to see what's going on and I hope you guys enjoyed the series. I hope you learned a little bit. I'm not sure what my next character would be. If you have any recommendations, let me know or I might switch, switch it back and forth from something else. You know me and how I do my channel. I always am just kind of flying by the seat of my pants and uh, just doing how things work best for me. So again, I hope you guys have a great Easter. I hope you guys have a safe and happy Saturday and tune in tomorrow where I have kind of a vlog style video of a toy, kind of a toy hunt, a comic hunt, and just kind of a day in the life of Durs that since I'm not gonna be doing the Sunday stash because of Easter, that is gonna replace it so you still have some content with me. So I'll be back Monday with my ABX haul. I hope you guys enjoy your weekend. Stay safe, stay legendary, and as always, I hope you guys find what you're looking for. Thank you.